I mean, this footage is gonna be so funny. I I don't know, like, I, I'm, I'm here. Um, I don't have makeup on, my hair is not done. Um, I'm barely smiling. <laughs> and that's just the way it is right now. Hi, this is Amber from DSA Threads and I have been waiting for a good time to do another video, waiting for it to feel right, waiting for me to look right, waiting for things to be right, and I am just done with that. <laughs> um, I've been having, I'm not gonna lie, I've been having a rough time lately. I have two kids, they're four and they're eight. Uh, one is in virtual school, the other one runs around all the time, and I'm really tired. I got to the point uh, where I thought I really can seriously consider just quitting this project. It's funny, it started right around the time I started making the farthingale and I have never made a farthingale before so maybe part of it was just the new territory but like I wasn't having fun anymore. Ten months is a long time uh, to actually get a project done um, and maintain your motivation and your interest and just keep going uh, and then of course you know our circumstances right now are like completely different than what they ordinarily would be uh, I'm just tired if you are a mother right now during all of this you are freaking tired like to the point of like like something needs to change I feel like it's been normalized that moms and women need to push themselves beyond what is healthy and I think that's completely not okay. This is gonna be a different video because it's not gonna be like, hey, look, here's the cool thing I made and it was super easy. It's gonna be like, this is something I made. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's good enough. <laughs> um, it's good enough. I feel like, hashtag, it's good enough. That's kind of the theme, right? Like, we're doing the best we can. We're all trying to get through this. Oh, I'm so out of spoons. <laughs> okay, moving on. So here we see some of the examples of farthingales that we have. Most of them are Spanish in origin. In fact, I saw this picture and I was like, oh cool, Venice, but no, it's actually a Spanish style. But we know they existed um, because when we look in Moda a Firenze, we, there are actually passages that describe in the inventories of Eleonora di Toledo and her daughters using them, as well as Bianca Capello. So once I figured out all that information um, and the materials that they were made out of, it was time to go to Pacellio. Here's my map for figuring out things, I'll explain that later. Uh, looked at the prints in Vicelio for Florentine women, and you can see that they are conical, um, and in the descriptions they do talk about hoops. They talk about wooden hoops. So that means it's time to go look at something extant. We have one extant farthingale described in Patterns of Fashion 5. It's great. Uh, where is it? Where? Oh, here we go. Okay. Um, they describe how it was constructed. It was originally on an effigy and like chopped in half, so that's why it's all wonky looking. Um, but they definitely go into detail about how this was put together. For my materials, I selected polyester silk and cotton velveteen. Here I am, this is my my hoop, and um, I was like, I don't need to do a mock-up. You need to do a mock-up. I made it up and I was like, this is huge. The thing looked pretty much like uh, Victorian. It was looking way too Victorian, if that makes any sense, because like, you know, hoops that are very wide on the bottom, and if you look at the pictures in Vicelio, it's not really quite as big as that. It's 
more subdued. But the good news is, is that I figured out what it really ought to be and it's looking way more natural now. However, that means that I have to take out like significant amount of fabric on the sides. I make mistakes sometimes and a lot of the time and you don't see them and so now I'm showing you them. <laughs> so this is how we go back and we fix. I want to say these clips are the best thing ever. I talk about them all the time. I use them all the time. I just clipped in the plastic boning that I am going to be using on the bottom um, and then just like raised it up so that everything's even all the way around. Um, and then I went in and I marked that. So that's going to be my measurement, my standard for where all of the other hoops going up are going to sit. There's two things that I use to try to get an understanding of what the circumferences of these hoops might be, or at least just the bottom one, because I knew that if I got the bottom one, I'd be able to do the rest of them by just, you know, or rather like, I don't know, like the, this process has been insane. Anyway, <laughs> I started out by using ratios to find out what the ratio of something like this on myself would be. Right, so we know that we have a, a circumference here, which is gonna be two pi r, correct? I hope so. And, and then we know that we have a smaller circumference up here at the waist, right? Which is also gonna be two pi r. First, we need to figure out what this one is and what this one is and then we can apply it to my body. So in order to do that we measure across right because that's going to give us our diameter which goes all the way across. So D equals and then we go in here and it doesn't really matter where you start like this is so small but like, for instance, she goes all the way to probably about here, 5 eighths inch. And then down here, two and a half inches um, equals D down here. And so the circumference is 2 pi R. The diameter is going to be 2 R with R being radius. Okay, so I have gone through and essentially figured out what the circumference is of the her waist and what the circumference is of the bottom hoop. What you're gonna do then is you're just gonna use ratios, right? And you're going to put, I'm gonna put the measurement of my waist, which is something like 31 inches, I think, my natural waist, her waist, which we know is 1.96, um, and then you knew obviously what we're looking for is what the bottom hoop would be on me And we already have the measurement down here of what her bottom hoop would be and just one final thing Which is that most likely she is wearing show pins um, So her feet are probably elevated a tiny bit Maybe by five inches. I can't remember I think I went through and I was measuring this one and based upon my height and her proportions, I figured out that she had to have been wearing at least five inch heels. And so then you just basically do the same thing, only you go up five inches, you know what I mean? You just pick, you're like, okay, I'm gonna do the hoop circumference of right here. If you're not gonna be wearing chopines and you want your skirt to go to the floor, um, then you just pick where you want. And if I wanted to, I could even have gone through and measured every circumference of every hoop that I was gonna do, but I am not that obsessive about that. Okay, once I was done with all the math, it was time to actually apply it and make a thing. Uh, here you can see I am making a guard on the bottom of my skirt, and that is going to be the first hoop. This is me wrapping the bottom hoop with the velveteen that I'm using. And yes, I am using plastic zip ties because I do not have wood reeds or, you know, canes or bents or whatever you want to call them. And I'm not about to go order them right now. 
Could I have drilled holes and tied them together? Yes, the original extant one that we see in patterns of fashion is reeds and they are tied together with linen thread or rope or something. Um, I use duct tape. I'm going to my theater roots. Duct tape sells all, like you can fight me if you want. Here I am using those awesome clips to keep everything around the outside of my zip ties. It's great, works wonderful, I love these things. And here I am just finishing, this is the, I guess the bottom, this is the bottom hoop. For the remainder of the hoops, I did the method of wrapping the actual hoop first with the velveteen and then whip stitching it to the exterior of the garment which is similar to the extant way of doing it, except it's not reeds and rope wrapped inside. And here you can see these are the first two hoops that I put on. Um, there's some bowing going on on the sides because that's bias, and I'm gonna need more hoops if I really want to make everything straighter. But for now, it's good enough. So this is where I'm at right now. I have three hoops on the farthingale. That should be enough to give me enough structure to continue forward with the skirts. I do need to finish off these side openings. I ended up making a casing and then stringing my tapes through it to tie on the sides. And you can see there's some bowing because of the bias. I, I mean, it's wonky as all get up. <laughs> it really is. It's not straight, but it's good enough. So that's where I'm at right now. Here you can see me trying it on with my embusto, and it's actually not too bad. I'm actually excited about it. I can't wait to put the skirt over it and see what it really looks like. Um, I, if I have the time, I will go in and I will add more hoops. Uh, but I'm okay with it this way too. And stick around for the blingy stuff that I've been making, um, this awesome bobbin lace that's going to go on the top of my skirt, and the actual making of that skirt, which will be my next video, and I'm excited about that. <laughs>